Here's an older shotgun that came to me for repair. Brake action, 410 gauge, single shot. I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. And this is the Topper M48 from Harrington and Richardson. As always, check and double check that the gun is unloaded and remove all live ammunition from the work area. Like most brake action shotguns, remove the hand guard by pulling up in the front, then break open the shotgun and the barrel will separate from the receiver. Remove the stock by removing the butt pad. Under the pad will be a long bolt that attaches the stock. There are four pins in the receiver. The bottom two hold the trigger group. Remember. Always use a brass square shoulder punch when removing pins from the receiver. The trigger group contains a number of parts, including some small springs, so I'm careful to pull it out slowly and retain the parts. In order to remove the mainspring, I pull back on the hammer just enough to align the retention hole, and I insert a small brass rod to hold the spring in compression. The mainspring and the top lever come out easily. Now, I remove the hammer pin and the locking bolt pin. The hammer and the locking bolt assembly will fall out. To separate the mainspring from the mainspring guide, I compress the spring in a vise and pull the pin, being careful to open the vise slowly to release the spring. So now I have to compress the spring so the retention holes line up and reinsert the brass rod. That spring guide was a little bit bent, so it wasn't as easy as it looks to line those holes up again. So we have the receiver, the four pins, the hammer, the locking bolt assembly, the locking bolt spring, the trigger spring and guide, the trigger guard, the trigger, the main spring assembly, and the top latch. And this is a slave pin that I'll use to install the trigger assembly. The trigger components have to be assembled and held together with a slave pin. Assembly of the receiver is more or less in the reverse order. First the locking bolt. Notice these pins may be crimped on one end. So if they are, insert the smooth end first. Then the hammer and top latch. The top latch has to engage the locking bolt. The 
locking bolt spring has to push against this surface of the locking bolt. The top latch moves the locking bolt like this. So the top latch has to be centered in order to move the locking bolt forward. The trigger has to be brought in from the back so the locking bolt spring pushes against the locking bolt. The holes require a little aligning and I install the front pin first because the rear pin will push out the slave pin. The firing pin is retained by a set screw in the top of the receiver. I put my thumb over the firing pin to retain it. There's a firing pin spring that will probably stay in the hole. When reinstalling the firing pin, don't over tighten the set pin and check the firing pin for freedom of movement and adequate protrusion. The mainspring engages the back of the hammer. Notice the orientation of the mainspring guide. By pulling the hammer back just a little bit, I take the tension off the brass retention pin so it can be removed. The original issue with the gun was a broken ejector, and it's in the barrel group. Under the barrel, there are two pins. The front pin is the ejector latch pin. It's not under any kind of spring pressure, so it can be easily removed first. The back pin is the ejector stop pin, and it's holding the very strong ejector spring. So I have to compress the ejector in the vise to remove the stop pin. With the stop pin removed, the ejector latch can be removed, and then the ejector very carefully released. The ejector can be removed, and there's also an ejector latch spring that was under the ejector latch. We have the latch pin, the ejector spring, the ejector, the ejector latch, the ejector latch spring, and the ejector stop pin. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a replacement part for this ejector, so I'll reinstall the broken ejector. It's going to fit like this when we get everything back together again. Assembly is a reverse of disassembly. Insert the ejector spring and ejector, then compress the ejector in the vise. Install the ejector latch spring and the ejector latch. The ejector latch spring has to be compressed to line up the hole in the ejector latch with, for the ejector stop pin. I found it easier to hold it together with an alignment drift than remove it from the vise and chase the drift out with a pin.
Then finally the ejector latch pin. Replace the stock, barrel, and handguard, and it's all back together again. I hope you found that educational. I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. Until next time, keep training, join the NRA, and be safe out there. Thanks.